We've got some hey, fresh new I'm Luis, and my brother Luis is not here today. And you're listening to the Two Content is Profit listen. podcast. We spent the last four years learning the strategies and techniques from some of the top marketers in the world on how to create the content that turns into profit. If you'd like to learn more about how to turn your content into profit, go to contentisprofit.com. Yes. Today, we are guests in a very special show called The Bonfire Entrepreneurs. Before we get started, though, I would love for you to subscribe. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button, follow us on social media at The Beast Bros Go, and share with the people that you love and you know that want this show in their lives. So today, the reason my brother is not here today, we actually had an interview with uh, this amazing show called The Bonfire Entrepreneurs and the amazing entrepreneur Kajal Kurana. She's actually from India and she lives in Singapore. So we actually had to do this interview super, super early in the morning. So I am so, 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 so excited to bring this piece of content for you. So just a little bit of background. This interview came out of some something called content conversations. So we've, we've touched on this topic a few episodes back and we love the what content allows you to do, allows us to connect, allows us to talk and have a conversation with like-minded people like Kajal. She actually started this podcast a couple months ago, which has been amazing. And she already has a thousand downloads, which is incredible. She's been networking with different entrepreneurs and uh, she was super kind and enough to invite you, invite us actually into her show. So, uh, what you guys are about to listen is our interview with her. So you guys are going to see a little bit of a backstory and um, how she's able to produ- produce this show. So uh, Kajal, th- if you're listening, thank you so much for the opportunity. And to everybody that's listening, please go ahead and subscribe to the Continuous Profit Podcast and also to the Bonfire Entrepreneurs. You guys will love it. So thank you so much. And we'll see you guys on the other side of the interview. Our special guest tonight are amazing entrepreneurs. They are two brothers. They are open book. They love to talk about everything. They are passionate about content. And how can that be turned into profit (laughs) for businesses? They are the founders of Biz Bros. They are Louis brothers. But on our show today, we have only one of the brothers. (laughs) So welcome to our show, Louis Kemiho. Yes. Hey, Kajal, what's up? Nice to meet you. Oh, well, meet you, right? We had an awesome conversation a couple of days ago, and thank you for having me on the show. It's uh, I'm totally amazing. delighted to have you. So first, <laughs> tell our listeners, where's the other brother? Why only one brother is here? <laughs> so my my brother, which uh, many know as Fonzie, um, he slept in today. I know it's like 9 p.m. on your time. It's like 9 a.m. on here. We normally get to the office a little bit later because we stay Later at night, we record our shows live around 7 p.m. So he's uh, he's like, yeah, I'll be there. And then I'm on the on the way here. I'm like, what happened? I'm like, oh, man, like it's been raining. I totally like slept in. I'm like, don't worry about it. Let me cover for you. <laughs> I will do oh, this thing. Nice. So, yes, nice. <laughs> that's why. That's the so real reason. Just for our listeners, I'm in Singapore and uh, Louis brothers are based in U.S. So, yeah. So <laughs> welcome to our show once again. And please tell our listeners, why do you both have the same first name? Both yeah. the brothers are called Louis. Can you imagine? Yes, <laughs> it's, it's like copy paste. <laughs> um, it's funny. So we're both from uh, Venezuela, right? And uh, over there, it's very common for brothers to have uh, the same first name. So my full name is actually Luis Daniel. That's why people see on the screen Luis Da, right? And then uh, my brother is actually Luis Alfonso. So now we call him Fonzie. But it's funny. Every time we go to a conference, we're like, hey, nice to meet you. I'm Luis. And then my brother comes and, uh, hey, nice to meet you. I'm Luis. And they're like, What? Same name, and the name tags normally is the same thing. It's like Luis Camejo for both, and we're like, we promise, we promise you that we actually pay <laughs> twice for this conference. We have two tickets. Um, so yeah, it's it, it's turned out a little bit of a joke, and uh, now we say it's just a marketing trick from our family, you know. <laughs> All right, amazing. Yeah, first time I met them, I was like, are you guys cousin? Because sometimes <laughs> cousins do have same name, and then he's like, no, 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 we are real brothers. I was like, wow, I never heard or had anybody, you know, like who have same first name. See, a lot of people have, you know, I think in some cultures, especially I think in Greece, 
they give the grandson the same name as their grandfather right yeah so technically your father and your son has the same name <laughs> so yeah that has been known to me but this that's uh that, that's the second part of the story you know my dad had a ha- had a first marriage and everybody on that side of the family it's Mario. Like his name is Mario. So his his older son is Mario. Like my my sister's Marionette. And then my mom is like, enough. Enough with the Marios. <laughs> We're actually gonna start the Louis trend. <laughs> oh <laughs> good, good, good. Amazing. I'm so so happy that you took out time to be here with us. So Luis, tell our uh, listeners about your journey. Yes, definitely. So um as, as you mentioned earlier, we're very passionate about content. And we truly, truly believe that content is the reason you can create a ton of profit for you and your business. Um, so we started about, the company we started about five years ago, the company Beast Bros itself, uh, uh, out of a place of like need and wanting to do something different. Um, we obviously grew up in Venezuela in a, in a, in a very awesome home and but the country went in a different direction poli- poli- uh, with, with its politics right uh, to the point that we had to migrate we had to look for new opportunities and that's why we came to the u.s we both played soccer and uh, in our minds we always wanted to do something something else right we never thought about going the typical route a corporate job we we felt like trapped in an office so we we're like hey what can we do so as soon as i graduated from college i'm like what can we do? And we started taking that conversation a little bit more serious um, to the point that I actually took like a super part-time job even after graduating college here in the state just so I could have the time to dedicate to this. So we read a book called The One uh, the One Thing. And we're like, what's the one thing that we can actually, you know, uh, be good at and do that? And at that time, five years ago, you know, social media was still like fairly fresh, right? Um, uh, and we're like, it. yeah, yeah. We, we started it started to grow. And uh, me and my brother were like, whoa, we can do this for a business. And uh, w- I remember investing uh, about 500 bucks in this course uh, about how to start a social media marketing agency. And that was, at the mm-hmm. time, the biggest investment that we've ever done. Uh, we put it on a credit <laughs> card, and we are like, oh, my gosh, is this thing actually going to work? And uh, and it did. We actually, like, started executing right, out, right off the bat. So we, I don't think I've ever finished that course, but, like, the first, like, three models were enough for me to give me that information so I could go out to the world and, and start, like, providing this service. So we started doing it, and we started working with uh, restaurants, specifically Mexican restaurants. I have no idea why. My my wife loves tacos, so I think, like, subconsciously, like, we went there, right? Um, and I remember having these conversations, and we started, like, convincing, right? And now we talk about something called uh, the frictionless sale. Uh, so, but at the time, we had no concept around that. And so we, we convinced this guy that he needed social media, that he needed to be present. And uh, it was a very rocky, uh, like, experience. Uh, it was... Uh, Every time that we were executing something, he was like second guessing and, you know, it, it was like really, really challenging. So we started to to think about how can we actually get that person that loves to work with us. And through that journey, uh, we started learning different things, uh, d- different different ways that we could help different businesses. We we were always around coaching. So we we, he- we love helping people either on sports with soccer, that that's what we knew at the time, uh, and now with right. this whole like content game, right? So fast forward a couple of years, we ended up in um, in Miami, Florida, in this massive conference. It was a thirty five thousand people conference in a stadium, um, and we we listened to to Russell Branson and Ryan Dice, two great marketers mm-hmm. out there uh, live, and it was for me the first time that I actually saw them live. Uh, and my brother had been following them for for quite a while now on on the learning journey, and uh, I remember listening to them. It's like, hey, marketing is the start of your sale. And at that point, I was working in the fitness industry, and and we were having so many issues hiring advertising agencies, right? Because the agency will come in and they will give you a ton of leads, right? They will invest with you and and they'll pay. Um, you, you'll pay them and they'll, they'll return those leads. Now, the studios, the fitness locations were like, guys, those leads are not quality leads. They're not closing. They're not customers, right? So there was a massive disconnect. And these guys saying like, hey, the marketing is just the start of the sales process. And most people see it as two different things. So I'm like, oh my God, that is, that, that is exactly the problem that we're having with our nine studios that we're running, right? 
And uh, so we came back and we're like, how can we, um, how can we provide a solution for, for that? How can we, you know, create, there's so many businesses having this problem. We're here to serve. Like we, we know we can help them. Um, so we established something called the omni-channel process, right? Which is just one single process that connects your marketing with your sale. That involves funnels and sales funnels. Mm -hmm. So we started to help brick and mortars, not just with their content, but with creating this whole process where their content helps them make sales, right? So that started to move the gears and like in the right direction. And that was a super fun process where we're like, we'll come into different businesses and we'll help them and create different products or grab stuff like that they already had and start selling it online together with like their content. So we made the connection between that content and that profit, right? Um, what was interesting though, is that we still were working with the, the right customer and, uh, it was, it was frustrating at sometimes because like you were like, we were developing all these programs. I remember, uh, one time this doctor, it was a dentist, right? And, uh, and we created this whole system that he loves content. He loves create like that's, he loves to be in front of a camera, which is really hard to find mm -hmm. in businesses like this. Mm -hmm. And then on the back end, we set up something called, um, the, the virtual console. So people will send them videos of their teeth and then he will come back and re and return like a video of, with his opinion. Right. And that was super successful. And to the point that he's like, guys, I just need to turn it off. And even after it turned off, the thing kept working. So we're like, oh my God, don't do it, Jason, don't do it. But uh, very strange. Can I <laughs> can I cut you off here? Sorry, very strange. Yeah. People are so conscious to come in front of the camera, and here you're telling me people are very confidently <laughs> showing their teeth. You know, opening their mouth. It's so funny. Okay, go on. Yeah. So um, that was that was a pretty interesting situation because what happened is like we completely created like a new revenue stream for for this business, and uh, on their back end, right, it was really challenging, I guess, for them at that point uh, to adapt very quickly Managed. to what was going on, yeah. right. They were receiving people from other sides. They were like uh, having different conversations and the whole process for the business what's gonna t was going to take some time, some training. So for them, that was not beneficial. And we're like, we couldn't understand it. We're like, oh my gosh, like you are getting customers, right? Like it's so different. Uh, so that, that was another friction point that we were like, okay, uh, this might not be the best exper experience for us to work with because it's not worth the, the friction and all the issues that are having between us, even though we're getting results. So we started to like really yeah. study our process where in that, the whole omni-channel process, right? From marketing all the way to sales, there's a lot of elements that happen in between. We saw them as Lego pieces, right? You start building different mm -hmm. blocks and different things. And we're like, what mm -hmm. is the one thing that we can really focus on to, 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 to be able to find that dream customer that we really want to work with? Uh, and we found out that we love to work with content creators, with people like you that have been publishing <laughs> like like crazy and, and believe in their message. Uh, we've had an experience with with media, right? We invested all this money in like equipment. We, we knew how to produce content. We knew all this. Um, so we decided to go with with specifically content. So in that journey, wow. we decided to do, to develop this, uh, this program, which is called M2M, uh, and then the safety net effect. So now we help different businesses that are already creating content podcasters, for example, right. That have that content tied down to a cell. We help them multiply mm -hmm. that message through these different systems. So now we're uh, super passionate. We're finding people like crazy that really want to work with us, that love to, to do this thing. So, you know, it only took us five years. <laughs> Amazing. Well, that's great. You know what? I have so many questions now when you were talking. Very important points, very important points. First, you spoke about one thing. I think entrepreneurs are missing on that big time because there are so many shiny object syndromes. They do not, you know, stick to one thing. So it's, there is a great message there. If you stick to one thing and, you know, have consistency, there is no way you are going to fail. Definitely, you need clarity from time to time. And if you have any obstacles, you need to, you know, undo what you're doing and learn from your mistakes. So first thing you mentioned was one thing. Second, you spoke about how you implemented that course. You bought it for $500. Even though you did not finish it, you did only three modules, but you took action. So this is the second biggest problem. People buy courses after courses and they don't finish. 
Then forget about finishing. Even if you don't finish, sometimes people can learn a lot from one or two modules. Or sometimes people reverse engineer. They go to the last, you know, to the end last module of the course and pick something up from there and start, you know. Implementation. That's the problem. People don't take action because of fear or whatever. And third, very important point you mentioned was how marketing is more important than your sales. Or definitely they're both tied up together. But for me also, I always get confused. What is more important, selling or marketing or both? So that's amazing. What were some of the challenges you had during this journey? Yeah, definitely. I mean, how much time we got? <laughs> There's so many, right? Uh, and and hopefully I can I can give me, find. Give me three three yes. bullet points. <laughs> so, uh, I mean, the fact that you mentioned right, the, the first thing like with the, with the course is that shiny shiny object syndrome. Uh, we definitely still have a challenge with that because uh, I think because we're so passionate about the thing that we do and the thing that we communicate with our clients with our audience. Um, we always want to be learning more, right? But we gotta be yeah. really careful because there's going to be a hamster wheel of learning and then you're going to crave more. And it's crazy. Like some people that I talk to this in, I guess the real world, not the online world, right? They're like, how could you do this? Because their experience is related to college or to school where they did not love what they were learning. But once you're so passionate about one thing, you just, keep wanting more and more and more and more and consuming content and consuming this and I'm, I'm paying for these courses. We actually produce um, some content for, for an entrepreneur that interviewed somebody that invested, I think it was like a hundred K in, in, in mm -hmm. courses, online courses. And, and it was like the oh lesson after that, right? He's like, I wasted so much time, so much money. Right. So it's like, okay, once you start moving, right. And I didn't know that at the time when I purchased that $500 course, but I remember like just going through the first thing and then I grab a couple nuggets from that and then I implement it, right? And in within one month, I made the money back that, that I could invest again in something different. Mm -hmm. And last year, actually, that's when this conference happened. So the first like three and four years were really just like consuming, consuming, learning, learning, learning. And then last year, we we're like, enough let's actually execute and bring what we're learning right. so we actually made a, a very conscious decision on on investing in ourselves as in mm -hmm. with events and with coaches because we got to a level where courses were already like not enough like we're like we're already like okay what's the next step and we actually invested this mm -hmm. and and we had actually an episode on the show um about this in the last six months we six x six times the wow. revenue of the last four years and it was because wow. of that. So along the way, yes, many challenges, which one was uh, the fear of, I guess, the, the FOMO, right? Fear of missing out. But we were like, yeah. okay, yeah. Uh, fear of missing a client, I guess. Like, I think this is a, a new term, fear of missing a client, because we're like, okay, well, if we like niche down, if we just do one thing, which is content, we're going to miss out on all those opportunities. But we have to understand that even if you miss out, there's room for so, so much more. And now that we're like deep mm. diving like we're going super deep on this content tangent right it's just like we're right. going down and with a very specific right type of content which is long form content um we've found so many opportunities and other conversations are so easy to the point that i uh last week we actually had a, a facebook live we, we recorded our, our show live and this guy that was on the audience was engaging and he was like right there with us and after that he's like guys can you jump on a call with me and now he we, because of that, he's now a client. He's an agency owner that he's now a client because that frictionless sale happened because we focus on one thing. So many of the challenges come down to like that shiny like object syndrome going from place to mm -hmm. place. Um, I will say mm -hmm. maybe pick three that you like really, really like look up to that are that are in, in the place where you want to be and then start implementing like right away because as soon as you start implementing, you're going to start finding these like small wins, but at the same time, you're going to start finding new problems that you got to solve. But if you never execute, you're never going to find them and you're never going to take it to the next level. Right. So uh, tell us like how, like I asked you, what is more important? You mentioned that marketing leads, you know, businesses to sales. Yeah. Put some more light on that. Yes, definitely. <laughs> Give us more clarity. Of course. Um, so uh, a lot of the time, a lot of people, and, and we, we used to work with a lot of brick and mortars, right? And the relationship between marketing and sales, they, 
they see no relationship whatsoever, right? Because they don't have an internal like process of marketing themselves. So they go out and they hire these agencies, right? To execute on, on that. Now, marketing is just the first step of your sale because to make a sale, the statistic I, I believe is like between 12 or 15 points of contact. What is a point of contact? Is somebody interacting with you in, in some sort of, like some form, right? Either they see a banner, they see a Facebook ad, they they receive a phone call from you. So they have to warm up to to you. So there's different levels of temperature, right? Call lead, then it goes to mm-hmm. warm, hot, and then the last one, which is the most important, is your dream one. The one that actually is already investing or is already expending money in your solution, but is frustrated with somebody else's. So now that person can be really easy. You can collect them because they're already on a place of on a purchasing uh mindset so now once we start seeing and we give permissions our, to ourselves that that is just one process where marketing is to start now things change because you're going to start investing your time in creating that relationship with your customer which is that very important side of marketing so marketing is not cheap tricks is developing a relationship with your future customer so they can trust you enough so they can give you their money and their time so you can create you know something beautiful together right so i'll give you an example with fitness right uh the fitness we i come from that we we used to run a couple fitness studios and uh, somebody that let's say somebody has never worked out ever right in their lives Mm -hmm. or or that are wanting to change and then if they go to a fitness studio that charges 150 dollars per month right maybe that's a big jump right right off the bat and if they don't have a, a relationship with you, that's going to be really challenging to to make that sale versus somebody yeah. that has been investing $150 already in a different fitness solution. But that fitness solution is not is not enough for them already. Now, if you present them with your marketing, a different solution with your message, they're going to come to you. Now, what happens to that person that you really feel like they need it? Right. And they also want it, but they're not ready to take that. Uh, jump of $150 a month. Well, that's where your marketing and your content and your relationship with it starts to happen because they might be ready, not now, but maybe in three months, six months, and nine months. So that whole marketing is going to create all those points of contact where you can interact with them uh, in some sort of fashion with a phone call, with your content, with videos, with pictures, with whatever, where their level of trust is now high enough so they go from cold all the way to dream. So they're like, okay, take my money. Let's go. Let's go work out. Right. So that's how. Or maybe give them like seven days free just to, you know, explore. Like you're sharing this example of fitness, you know. Yes. Some gym and studios give this option of, you know, why not join, you know, just for seven days. And it's going to be free and explore. And most of the time it happens that during those seven days, this cold client becomes, you know, like a warmer, becomes your customer because they have experienced the, you know, the infrastructure. So so exactly. So we talk about, you know, how level of quality of that point of contact, right? So maybe a phone call is going to be a lower level than an experience in person. So that's why you see so many of those offers where it's like, hey, come in and try this for free, because now that person is in there with you. Uh, for a for a period of time, right? Which is time is more valuable than money. So they're actually giving you the time to interact with you. So now they're creating those points of contact. If it's one day, one week, even better, because now the coach, right? If we're talking in the fitness industry, has the opportunity to develop a relationship with them. And now that customer is going to be able to see, okay, right? Th- there's a benefit to this. Now I have a relationship. So the point of contact goes up on the level scale. And now is so much easier for them to make that decision because you they build that report. So content and marketing does that on an online level. So the more time they spend with you, right, they're giving you their time, uh, the better it's going to be for you and your business when you present an offer because they're going to be like, mm, I trust this person. I like that person. You know, I resonate with the message. Now I'm ready to actually give them money in exchange of what they can give me of value. Amazing. So uh, what I understand is marketing is basically the foundation to achieve those sales, right? Without good marketing, you can't have that kind of 
um, relationships and trust with your customers. And when you don't have that, sales becomes even more challenging. Am I right? <laughs> that is correct. Yes. Okay. <laughs> cool. So what what do you see like the new entrepreneurs or young entrepreneurs do? You know, what are the mistakes they are making? Some of the entrepreneurs, which they can avoid according to you, because now you have been in this industry for five years and you have had your own challenges and I'm sure you're still learning and growing, but what can you advise people who are a few steps behind you? Yeah, definitely. Uh, thank you for that question. It's actually a really good question. So, um, uh, you know, we're still in this journey, right? Like we're always growing, uh, but I'm going to talk specifically with creating content and, and, and the challenge that we were facing with that. Because uh, we really truly believe like in the last 20 minutes, we've talked about how that is really like, relatable right there off the bat with your sales and your business, right? And if you don't make sales, then your business goes under, right? So uh, I remember we were, last year, we were going out and having all these meetings with different businesses, with business owners, with the decision makers on on these content programs that we were selling. And we will sit down with them and they will, of course, do their research. So they will go like, guys, you are not publishing, like you, you, like all your social media is empty, only personal stuff. And we're like, yes. Yeah. So, I mean, we want to keep it that way, right? For now. Uh, but don't worry, don't look at us, go look at our clients. But they're like, hmm, you know, the level of report went down because we we're not drinking our, our own Kool Aid, right? And even though we're, mm-hmm. we've been working on this industry for about four years at the time, we were not executing within like our own company because we we're focusing on sales, right? We, we weren't making that connection. So we came back to the office that day and we're like, we sat down in front of, of a whiteboard and we're like, okay, so we're having all these conversations. The report is, is getting lower instead of higher because they don't see that content in our accounts. They want to see that, right? So we're, we're busy building the business. We're making all these decisions. And even though we, we execute with our clients, we're not executing on the content side for us. So how can we be present? We c- consistent because that's the number one thing with content. You have to be consistent uh, so we can do it internally with our business. So we sat down and we're like, okay, let's actually... What's the minimal viable content that I can produce today that I don't need to edit, I don't need to put subtitles on, I don't need to do anything to get it out there? And the answer for us was Facebook Live. Um, So that was the only way that we found fit at the time, this was about six months ago, uh, to publish consistently so we can tie down that content to the profit of our own business instead of doing it for the others, right? So we're like, let's drink our own Kool-Aid and let's do this. So we decided to go Facebook Live for 45 days. We made it super public. We're like, guys, we're actually going to go and explaining all these secrets and we're going to talk about this 45 days in a row, like not skipping weekends. Weekends we will be there as well and, and we will do this. The beautiful thing that happened was that this only took us about 5 to 10 minutes per day. And the only thing that we did was grab that video, put it on Facebook because there's no editing, no nothing, no friction. I could just hit publish and record and that that was it. And then we will put it on LinkedIn because there's a, a very big way for us to get clients. Uh, guess what? At day 20, we actually stopped. And wow. we stopped wow. not because of the bad reasons, because the good reasons. We actually got so much business out of that that we actually now we're having issues fulfilling our own content. Uh, so mm-hmm. now we built the systems, you know, that comes with that. When the systems were ready to go so they could support and, and we could free our time, now we restarted again. And the second time, same thing. My brother actually had to st- stop at day 20 again. So and, and if you go back and you see uh, my videos, they're like around 11 at night, 12 at night. So my advice to, them, to, to everybody that's starting right now, um, there, there is a business. There, there's a lot of things. There's a lot of moving pieces that that an inter- mm-hmm. entrepreneur has to like take care of. Content, it is one of them, and it's probably one of the most important things. And it's gonna take you a lot less than you think to publish. So my my challenge for somebody that's starting up that cannot invest in a team to create these contents, that cannot invest in in a team to repurpose that content, or they don't have enough time to repurpose that content and create it is like find your minimum viable content for you is recording this episode, right? You told me your story a little bit like this show is amazing. What you've done 
a th more than a thousand downloads in like in like a month <laughs> that's amazing right uh, two months two months in yeah. two months so look at that so it, it's it's amazing so for us that was our facebook lives right for somebody else could be posting three times a week but what is the minimum viable content that you can stay consistent so you can actually make your mess like get your message out so people can start reaching out to you because they're the perfect fit right they're going to sync with that message they're going to listen to you you're going to create those points of contact and eventually it's going to go full circle and they're going you're going to them something you're going to deliver so much value and they're going to be your customers so invest in your content and if you don't have the resources what is your minimal viable content that you can produce consistently so that is my number one advice <laughs> right that is great because you uh, emphasize on consistency sometimes we post it for one month or two months and then we give up entrepreneurs need to understand the importance of being consistent you know at least for one year I would say, give yourself time to build those relationship and trust with your niche, pick up one, you know, um, niche and then post content for at least one year. If you're really authentic, right? Yes. If you're trying to make quick money, it doesn't happen. Even if you make quick money, it's not going to last too long, <laughs> right? Anyway, so Louis, yeah, I mean, you both, I mean, we still have one brother. We will interview the other one next time. You guys have so much um, knowledge and information and you have experience from your own journey, um, but we don't have so much time. Before we uh, close the show, what is one piece of advice you want to give the entrepreneurs to escape burnouts, increase productivity and stay in the game? Because most of the entrepreneurs, uh, you know, give up within the first 12 months, like Tony Robbins says, people overestimate what they can do in one year and underestimate what they can do in 10 years. Yeah. And most of the businesses fail in first 12 months. So please give our audience one crisp uh, golden nugget, which they can follow so they can stay in the game of success. Yes. Uh, so I think th this will resonates big time with me uh, because we, while we're doing this, we're also building a T-shirt company. So we started that and uh, this was probably like two, almost three years ago. Um, and we were like, we thought it was super cool to like have these T-shirts made and we will make them. Uh, but as soon as we started like making the T-shirts, we didn't have the capital to invest in, in a team, right? So we, we were actually printing the T-shirts ourselves in the garage of our house. And we had like big orders, like 300 oh, wow. shirts ordered and stuff like that. So we'll come back from, from our work, from our job and start creating these T-shirts at 9 p.m., getting done at like 3 a.m. in the morning. And guess what? That didn't last long because we hate it the process of creating the t-shirt. We love the final product, but we hated the process. So that taught me that if you do not love the process, you might might have to rethink, you know, what you're doing mm. because that's not sustainable long term. So if you don't love the process, either find somebody that loves the process and can execute it for you. So at the time we didn't have that possibility or mm. move to like a slight different part of that and be like, how can I reshape my passion where I can actually enjoy the process? And that was exactly what happened with us with content as well. We're having such a bad experience with business owners because there was so much friction. Uh, they were questioning everything that we were doing, even though the results were there. So we we're like, okay, we, this process right here, we're not enjoying it. So how can we still be in the marketing content game, enjoying the process and loving what we do? Because at the end of the day, that's what's going to keep you there, right? Um, so mm -hmm. that's why we now focus just on long form content uh, and creating all these processes because that's the process that we love. So if you do not love the process right now of the thing that you do, you have two options. Again, go find somebody that loves that part of the process or maybe rethink a little bit and be like, okay, what's the, the side of what's the process that I actually love and enjoy that then that little piece you can scale and start bringing people on. So enjoy the process. Amazing. Like Russell Brunson says, <laughs> find out who can do it for you. Yes. Now, not like, <laughs> how can I do it? You know, it's who. If you have the resources, guys, and if you're passionate about something, find out who can help you. Uh, because sometimes we have this fear of not investing money, you know. It's very important that without investment, you are not going to grow. All the successful people in the world today have had some kind of investment, right? Time, money, you know, a lot of things. Yeah. 
amazing so louise shared a lot of amazing points today about focusing on one thing about implementing and about finding your passion make your passion your business and if it is if you're not enjoying the process repurpose it amazing louise <laughs> So we are back. There you have it. It was such an awesome conversation. Kajal, again, thank you so much for having us in your show um, and letting us share our story. So again, if you are listening and you enjoy this episode, we want to thank you for the bottom of our heart. Please go ahead, check out Kajal's episode. I think we already went live in her platform. So I am so happy uh, to be able to collaborate with something like this. So if you do have a business and uh, you believe that content is what drives that profit, we are completely completely confident that that's the thing that's going to push your business to the next level. So if you uh, are looking for some help, whatever level you're at, if you are starting uh, with content creation, you have no idea what's the next, uh, what, what next to tackle. Uh, we were there with you. And we created our minimal viable content and we were able to scale business to, to new heights. So we're there to help you. Also, if you are a big company that has the resources to scale their already existing content, we are here to help you out and uh, to have a conversation. We would love to have it uh, so we can show you how we can do that and, uh, and take it to the next level. So again, thank you guys. Thank you so much. Please do not forget to subscribe to the podcast, to the Contents Profit Podcast, and we are here to help in any way possible. Please subscribe, Contents Profit, follow us on social media, Beast Rusco, and we will see you guys in the next episode. Thank you, and we'll see you soon.